Some people call it courage. I prefer the term rabid, because that's certainly where I was, and very angry. Most of us were angry. Uh, I think the the anger was probably the uh, the bottom line emotion that spurred us all on. Everybody including me, who was involved, especially in the early 70s, was taking a real big risk. I'd been kicked out of the Peace Corps for, for being gay. I ended up in a mental institution. I spent from 1970 to 1978 jobless and unemployed because nobody would hire me because my mouth was so big about the issue. All of us knew that we were potentially sacrificing our life. I had more than one personal friend in the early 70s murdered. Soft and sweet, the way he waltzed was too hippy for a psychiatrist to think was fitting. So they said, Hey, son, we think we should sneak you a slug, a raw manhood. The state hospital's just a place to get one. Now they call him a queer sicky. There was no genre in music willing to accept gay music. So it didn't matter. We were going to be out no matter what genre we chose. We were desperate to get out valid information about who we were. And the album allowed us to distribute information everywhere to anybody who would order it. I'm sure there were more than a few hundred people who ordered copies of Lavender Country who, who kept it secret, who couldn't show it in Lincoln, Nebraska, or Pierre, South Dakota, or Bloomington, Indiana. They couldn't show their parents. They couldn't show anybody. They hid it in their bedroom. But they ordered it, and they listened to it. The reactions were, went the whole spectrum. Uh, there were people who came to us in tears because they loved Lavender Country so much. And there were people who were outraged that we had enough nerve to do it. And there were people who were astonished and unaccepting of the fact that something like gay country music even had a right to exist. But we didn't care about that. We only cared about the people who cried. <laughs> That's where every Sue and Hannah arrives at queer nirvana because they're lesbian 
woods under every bush and tree. So y'all can have them out, my dears do. Lavender country, y'all can have and make yourself to fall. I'm 70. I'm not. I'm not very impressed by fame anymore. It's elusive, and it, it doesn't really mean much. To think that Lavender Country is going to outlive me is... That's the real juice, that's the real joy, that's the real profoundness, that's what I really love. When we made Lavender Country, and for decades, the only people who could respond to it were gay people. Um, it was very difficult for straight people to listen to it, but not anymore. You don't need to be gay <laughs> to understand Lavender Country. You just need not to have your head up your butt about human sexuality. Is it an artifact or is it alive? It's both. It is an artifact, and issues that were confronting the lesbian gay community in the early 70s were much more intense than they might be now, but they were the same issues. I believe that the album resonates now maybe more than ever. It still has meaning. Love or what you wear, we don't.